jars of pepper. Peppers. <laughs> Pe peppers. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back. So today we are in the kitchen and we are going to be pickling peppers. Now I love pepperoncini peppers. Pepperoncini peppers are kind of sweet, kind of spicy, and I tend to buy them a lot. <laughs> I almost always have pepperoncini peppers in my cupboard. We love I believe it's called Mississippi pot roast and we tend to make it a lot. Um, but in our house, we always call it Mississippi mud. I don't know why. I don't know if that's an actual name for it, but it's just stuck. So it's just the Mississippi mud roast is what we usually call it. But today I'm going to be making pepperoncinis. I only had um, a handful of pepperoncini plants and I could not get my color quite right. So I was having trouble. I didn't even think they were pepperoncinis as they were coming up. My plants went my fruit went straight from green to red. There didn't seem to be a lot of in between, but I'm not too worried about it. These peppers are still going to be delicious and we're still gonna use them. And the more and more I was thinking about it, I'm like, how pretty are these, the green and the red? I kind of have a feeling like Christmas day, like that evening, I think we're gonna have Mississippi mud roast for supper because it's gonna be so beautiful, that red and green. So the recipe I'm using calls for 11 pounds of peppers. That's a lot. And I've got a lot less than that. So I am going to be changing up the recipe a little bit, but if you're interested in the recipe I'm using, it is pickled hot peppers from the complete book of home preserving um, by Ball. So that is the recipe I'm going to be using because it has just a simple ingredients, peppers. It calls for a few different types of peppers, but safety wise, things I've learned after canning for a while, peppers are interchangeable in canning recipes. So if you want something spicier, use the hot peppers instead of the sweet peppers. You want something sweeter, use the sweet peppers instead of the hot peppers. Um, so I'm just using the peppercini. I'm going to be adding some garlic. Um, this is garlic we grew in our garden and then vinegar and that's it. Because I'm making such a small batch, I love to use things to help me figure out the amount, um, like this liquid, um, measuring equivalent. I just use this chart to help me because the original recipe is for six cups of white vinegar and I'm only making like a sixteenth of a recipe. Crazy, right? Like such a little amount. So I don't need that. So I like to be able to look at um, my measurements and like see that one cup, I'm going to be using six cups. It happens to be the same as 16 tablespoons. Oh, I'm making 16. So I can use this to kind of figure out my measurements a little bit better. All right, so I ended up doubling the brine because it's nothing worse than running out of brine and this is just such a small amount I'm making. It's really not that much extra. So I've got water, vinegar, and garlic in there and it's just to kind of give it the garlic flavor. 
I'm gonna actually put it on low while I'm getting everything else ready. Because this is a dish um, for our whole family, kids and all, and they don't like things super spicy, I'm going to be using um, half pint or jelly size um, jars to make this. And I have so many of these, but I don't think it's going to fill too many. I tend to buy a lot of my jellies and jams. We really like like spicy jellies and we'll um, buy those from people who've made them. Um, but I'm trying to get better about making our own. We have only been eating that peach jelly as far as like peanut butter and jelly type sandwiches and things like that. Peach jelly is all we're eating right now because I didn't make anything else and I have that made. I do have about 30 pounds of strawberries in our freezer and hopefully I can find some time to make some strawberry jam and then we will have that too. Usually, you know, typically it would be like grape and strawberry we would switch between, but just having those two options at least it switches it up a bit. I've got my canner heating up. I've got four half pints in there. I don't think I'm gonna fill them all, but four half pints in there. And it is a 10 minute water bath process. Anything you're processing in a water bath that's 10 minutes or more is sterilizing your jars. Um, so that's just really handy and good knowledge to know. Um, and most things that are like five minutes, you can do 10 minutes without affecting the quality. So another safety tip, when you are canning. So this recipe I'm using is for pints. You can always safely go down in jar size. So I can do the half pints in here just fine, um, but you can't safely go up. So it means it hasn't been tested for quarts. So I wouldn't do this recipe with quarts, but I do know that it'll be safe for half pints. Now, depending on what item you're canning, it might affect the quality. These peppers, I'm gonna cook them anyways. I'm not concerned with that. So as I was getting that first jar in, I'm like, this liquid, I didn't think it was a lot, but between the peppers, I still have a lot more peppers left. And between what I have left over and then my liquid, I used basically all of it in one jar. And I'm like, something's not right. So then I re-looked at my recipe and realized I was weighing my peppers by pound and they're listed by cup. Ugh. So anyways, it didn't affect anything safety-wise, just means I need some more brine and I need it fast. So thankfully I've got a little pot, so I've got more going and that just means I'm going to end up with more jars of pepper, peppers, <laughs> Pe peppers. <laughs> All right. So we ended up with those four half pints. They look really good. So excited. Glad you got to see me again.